Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome you back, all, every one of you. Just amazing all this that's been happening throughout this week, this weekend. Hallelujah, bringing us together and just praising the Lord and just feeling the presence of God. How many of you felt the presence of God so strong, strong, with just the anointing is just so powerful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this evening we have uh, Dr. Jim and Debbie Lehman. They're going to be speaking this evening. So Dr. Dr. Jim and Debbie Lehman have served the body of Christ for 48 years as senior pastors, teachers, business leaders, apostles, and mentors. They reside in Grapevine, Texas, and currently oversee several works in Texas, Missouri, and Tennessee. They are founders of Wellspring Is Israel, a ministry designed to help believers understand and connect to their Jewish foundations. All God's children have Jewish roots in Yeshua, King Jesus, and can walk in the covenant blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wellspring Israel is called to honor Israel and empower the church to not only love the land of Israel, but the Jewish people as well. We are part of a prophetic movement in which God's spirit is returning and his people are returning to biblical Jewish foundation. Wellspring Israel is presently on the Now Television Network with a broadcast every Friday evening, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on their Wellspring Israel YouTube channel weekly. Debbie has a bachelor's degree in education in history, political science, and government. She has spent 20 years teaching mentoring the body of Christ on how to hear the voice of God and walk in their destiny. She is gifted in dream interpretation and understanding your dream language. Jim's undergraduate degree is from Trevecca University with a bachelor's degree in Christian education, master's of arts, religion, Asbury, the theological seminary, master's co cohort certification, Arizona State University in Church Growth and Marketing, and a Doctor of Ministry, Christian Leadership University. Dr. Jim and Debbie travel through the U.S., Africa, Israel, bringing understanding to Jewish customs, peace, and scripture with Hebraic understanding and application. They are anointed, wonderful couple who have a unique, joyful presence in their teachings that is easily seen as they often finish each other's thoughts. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to bring uh, Dr. Jim Layman up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give a clap offering to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get some adjustment here. Uh, now, they're wondering how I finish your sentences. Well, 46 years of marriage this August is one reason. But the other was the brain aneurysm. <laughs> and so because of uh, the, the miracle of the brain aneurysm was the, the healing that he walked through. You know, he's a one percenter. But um, we didn't we were so thrilled when he came out of the hospital. The doctors were so thrilled that he was breathing, swallowing and walking that we didn't stop to do all the cognitive tests. And so we found, you know, we walked out several years of healing with that. And we still um, had opportunities over the next couple of years to teach and speak and uh, our business. And uh, at because of the aneurysm at first, uh, he would begin speaking. And then all of a sudden, there would just be this blank stare. And, and the Lord would have me pick it up and go with it. And otherwise, I'd never be up here. And so that's what God did. Well... We used to go through the fire lines in a pastor's conference and we go through the fire line and a prophet would stop and he would tell us that he would tell me, he said, your wife is a prophet and you need to listen to her. <laughs> and that kind of grated with my pride. 
you know, and I finally submitted to that and realized she is a prophet. And uh, so we're blessed. Um, I, I have a word for Dene Nation, and I offer to you, I shared it with the table at lunch today, and I think I need to release that first. Um, prophet, is it Ella? Prophet Ella, when she was giving her testimony this, this morning, she said that Dene Nation are seers. And I have been studying Noah and the Tower of Babel. And uh, the Tower of Babel took place 100 years after the flood. And Noah was still alive. And the Tower of Babel, uh, as we know, was... All the world spoke one language and it was in unity. And God said, if they can do this in unity, they can do anything because they were raising up a tower that really was a, uh, a portal. There's a better way of saying it. A portal that would have direct access to the gods and the gods could come down and mate with, uh, uh, with human beings. So it was it was the, the whole thing of the fallen angels mating with the daughters of men causing Nephilim. And so uh, Nimrod was was the one who saw this to be done. And Nimrod's word in Hebrew means rebellion. And so what happened was God saw this and he scattered the people. And he made languages so they could not communicate. Now, just a side note with that. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit and God uh, blesses us, baptizes with the Holy Ghost, and we receive our prayer language, we, re we received a gift of tongues, God is redeeming what happened back at the Tower of Babel. Because now we can communicate spirit to spirit and we can interpret interpret that. So anyway, at that time, when God scattered the nations and the people and caused many languages, what took place was scientifically, have you ever heard of what's called the continental shift? Now, the continental shift believed that after the flood, the land was one land mass. Everybody was on one landmass, but at this time, it was a hundred years after uh, the after the flood. About a hundred years after the flood, what took place was he scattered the people, and then at that same time, in during that period, the continental shift took place, and the the continent was divided into many continents, and the waters came and divided the continents. And the, the three sons of Ham, uh, of Noah, uh, were scattered. And the son that, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names, but the one son was on the continent of Europe. And that's where I come from. That's where my people come from. Okay. The other, another son was scattered. And the, con when they, when it, the continental shift took place was Africa. And that's where uh, so many people come from, and and even Jewish people come from Africa. And then the the other son came and was uh, the the continental shift caused him to be in Asia, which would be the Middle East, and which would be the eastern part continents of China and India and Philippines and and uh, Japan and also North America. So I was listening to Ella say this today because I've been studying this and I heard a rhema word from God say this. He said, the Dene nation comes from the tribe of Issachar because the tribe of Issachar were seers and they knew the signs and the times of God. They knew the calendar. They knew the moon and the new moon and the 
and each month, and they listen to the signs of the times. And I believe when that continental shift took place, I believe it is, I know my name is, is Jim Lehman, that when that continental shift took place, that that your people were on that part of the of the continent and it shifted to where you were then on the North American continent. And I think if you'll study this, I know this, I believe it with all my heart, it's a rhema word, that the Nay nation have Jewish roots because you are seers and because you come from the sons of Issachar. Now, I'll, I'll study this more, but that was a revelation today. And somebody say amen. Somebody say praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this is the kind of stuff that we do, okay? Uh, we teach Jewish roots of Christianity through Yeshua King Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach is his Hebrew name. Jesus the Messiah or Jesus the Christ, okay? And we teach how to walk in the timing and seasons of God and how to uh, understand uh, what God is saying and doing prophetically through his calendar. There's a Western calendar. We, we go by and that's called the Gregorian calendar. And there is a Jewish calendar or a biblical cal calendar that actually began in Exodus chapter 12 at Passover. God told Moses to tell the children of Israel that he was going to start for them a new calendar. They had been, they had been life on for 400 years on Egyptian calendar, and he was starting a calendar based upon the rotation of the moon. Okay. And you want to add anything on that? Well, I think I'm, I'm going blind over here since the computer's over there. So should I join you, babe? Just... <laughs> Look, we're going to take a break. We're going to get our things together. Should I just move it? Yeah. I think so. That way we won't block that side. So, yeah. So, Thank you guys. Why Debbie's doing that, let me move on. So, God set up his holy days. God set up his holy days, and he calls them feasts. In Scripture, they're called Moedims. Moedim means appointed time appointed day and the first feast he set up we find this in exodus 23 and leviticus 23 and the first feast that he set up was called the feast of passover and we read this in exodus 12 and these are his feasts he said these are my holy days okay and in the feast of passover there are three festivals or feasts that we celebrate and Jesus is the fulfillment of every one of these feasts in the New Testament. There are over 400 prophecies of Jesus as Messiah in the Old Testament, okay? And so the first feast is in the spring of the year. It's usually uh, April, March or April. And it is a feast of Passover. And we know what? That was the 10th plague. They were to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. And, and God himself would come all, all, over all of Israel and Egypt in Goshen. And those that had the blood of the lamb on their doorposts, their, their firstborn was saved. Okay? And then right after that was the Feast of Unleavened, where they baked bread without leaven so they would be able to travel quickly. And unleavened represents Christ as being without sin. Yeast represents sin in the New Testament. And so Jesus was the spotless Lamb of God. He was crucified on Passover. He was he was uh, perfect in every way. And when he went to the grave, he fulfilled unleavened. And when he rose again, he fulfilled first fruits. And first fruits took place in the Old Testament when the children of Israel went through the Red Sea and Pharaoh chased after them. And God separated the sea, and then Pharaoh's army was destroyed in the, uh, bringing the waters back, right? Okay, so each one of these feasts have to do with a harvest. And so the spring feast has to do with the barley harvest, 
and the barley harvest has to do with the price that you would pay to free slaves. Now, why is that significant? Because Passover is all about deliverance. They were enslaved for 400 years. They were in bondage for 400 years. And God came and brought Moses as a deliverer, as a type or shadow of Christ. And literally what took place was set his people free. Okay. And then the next feast is 50 days after uh, first fruits. 50 days after first fruits is when the children of Israel journeyed to Mount Sinai. And for seven Sabbaths, on the day after the seventh Sabbath, was called the Feast of Shabbat, or the Feast of Pentecost. And we, I'm, I'm giving you the scripture references. And this is where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments or the Ten Covenants. And gave Moses the first five books of the Old Testament, which is called the Torah in Judaism. And in, in, uh, in Christianity, the Greek word is Pentateuch. Okay? And so this is where he gave him the, the, the first five books of the Old Testament. And on Mount Sinai, he also gave him the blueprints on the tabern, Moses' tabernacle in the wilderness. All right? And so. This is very important because up until then, the children of Israel related to God as a judge, but not as a benevolent covenant father. And so God gave them the Ten Commandments, or I call the Ten Covenants, because he loved them so much, he wanted to protect them as a benevolent covenant father. And he said, if you will do this, I will bless you. I will, I will protect you. I will cover you. And it, and it was about relationship. We have an axiom we've said for years. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. So you can have all kinds of rules you want with your children, right? But if you don't have a relationship with them, they will be rebellious. That's the same way in, in leading, shepherding people or sheep. You can have all kinds of doctrine and theology and rules. But if there is no relationship with Jesus, they will cast that off and they will do their own thing. Okay. And this was the harvest of wheat. Wheat has to do with the abundance of provision. Okay. So the first time after Mount Sinai, the first thing that happened was they come to the water and it's bitter. Right. And Moses says, what do I do, Lord? They're complaining. They want to go back to Egypt. And they're complaining. The next thing you know, God says, take that tree over there and put it in the water. And the water became sweet. And the stick, okay? And God introduced himself as Jehovah Jireh, or excuse me, Jehovah Rapha, the healer right there. Okay? Then he provides quail and or manna. Manna was a type of bread that was at their doorstep or at their door every morning, like dew would come down from the mountain. But here's the thing, in rabbinical understanding, for those that rejoice for the manna that was at their door, the manna would be right there. But those that complained and argued and murmured that they didn't like the manna, the manna was out in the desert. And they had to go and get it, and it was full of maggots and worms and all kinds of stuff. So don't complain on the provision that God has given us. Are y'all with us, right? Okay, so don't curse your The other thing I like to teach here is yeah. the rabbis teach that whatever they wanted, whatever they were hungry for, when they ate the manna, it tasted like what they were hungry for. So now, uh, how I, you know, why do I like to eat pizza? <laughs> you know, why do I like to eat steak and potatoes? You know, well, guess what? I would have, I would have been hungry for that, and the manna would have tasted that way. That's how God provides for us. He even, He even satisfies our taste buds. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, and then we have the next feast, and it was in the fall. It's in the fall of the year. And for this year, so mark your calendars, 
Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets, on our calendar this year is October the 3rd. The Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year in Hebrew. This is when it's a new year. It's a new civil year for Israel. And it's the new year from counting from Adam and Eve in Genesis all the way to this new year. So in October 3rd of this year, it will be the year of the Lord, 5785. Uh, okay? And so Rosh Hashanah is on, that's the trumpets. And then 10 days after that, which would be, I think it's going to be October the 13th, is Yom Kippur. And that's called the Day of Atonement. And then five days after that is Sukkot and Tabernacles. And these are the, the Feast of Tabernacles, the three feasts in the fall of the year. So you look at this and you have three feasts that are part of Passover, one feast that's part of Pentecost, and three feasts that's part of Tabernacles. And how many feasts is that of God's holy days, his appointed days? How many is that? That's seven. Because seven represents completeness and rest perfection okay well god calls the children of israel uh three times a year uh to his high holy days three times a year i want to have a holy convocation i want to meet with you remember he's saying i want to be your covenant father i want to teach you my ways and, of course, we know the children of Israel had a tendency to wander and wander back into their own mindset of slavery. So God says three times a year, Israel, I want you to come together and recognize, observe, commemorate, take part of my high holy days. These three feast times, the first feast is in the spring of the year and then Pentecost is in. Uh, the beginning of the summer months and then fall of tabernacles is in um, the fall. And so three times a year, he says, I want every male to come and bring an offering and come unto me. And I'm going to sup with you. I'm going to, we're going to have high holy days. Did anyone grow up with revivals? Did anyone besides me, my church would have uh, a fall revival. And it lasted two weeks, and that got too much, and then it went to one week, and then it just went to a weekend, and now it's just one specific day. And then the spring revivals, you know, a lot of the Jewish roots have been um, tweaked and passed down through um, church history, and it's originating from God saying three times a year, I want you to come. I, I have high holy days. I'm going to meet with you because I have... Uh, blessings I want to get through you, in you and through you. And so um, he asked, the Jews were great stewards of the feast. Yeah, the one thing we understand as we came into this knowledge and understanding about 20 years ago, 23 years ago, was I always thought these were Jewish things. I didn't understand that they were God's things. He gave these dates to the Jews to steward, but they are for all his children, okay? He, nowhere in Scripture does this, the feasts are called the Jewish feasts. That's man. That's us. We said that. They are God's appointment days. They are his anniversary dates. Now, some of you have heard our, us teach before, but for those that have not, Debbie and I will be married 46 years, August this 12th. That's just in a few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? If I forget this anniversary date, we're still in covenant. That's right. We're still married, right? But I will not have favor with her if I forget it. There will be no blessings. There will be, yeah, there will be no blessings. All right? Isn't that a great word picture? And so God yeah. says, now let me just say this. None of this has to do with salvation. We never teach. You have, to, you have to honor these days to be saved, to be born again. It has nothing to do with that. We're in covenant, even though I would forget the anniversary date. But it has to do with God getting into us, his timing, his prophetic voice, 
his his nature, his spirit, his presence, and it is a witness to the Jew when the Gentile celebrates God's holy days. So we're going to get into that in a minute. Okay. Now, one last thing is see the circle here. I put this purposely in a circle because God's calendar and God's time. Now, God, what God dealing with man is cyclical. Thank you, Debbie. And as she, she finishes my sentence, right? So God, God dealing with man is cyclical, and God is not bound by time, but He has created time to deal with us out of eternity. Okay. And so this is the time. So the circle is a Jewish understanding of time is cyclical. A Western civilization understanding of time is linear. And so how that works for us, we have A, B, C, and D. And we are going along in life and we miss C. And all of a sudden we think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And we feel like we have to go back to A to start all over. No. Because God's time is in cycles. Every year, these cycles come around. Every new moon, these cycles come around in his calendar. Every week, Shabbat, Sabbath comes around. They, they are a cycle. And because they're a cycle, God is always dealing with us in his timing, in his calendar, in his cycle. Okay. You see, if you miss God, Understand a Hebraic understanding is just get back on the bus. And when you're climbing up the mountain, I see it this way I'm climbing up the mountain and I'm just having a good time. I just like the trees, doesn't it? It's great, but I'm not aware of anything around me. I'm just me, myself, and I enjoying the oxygen in the trees. And life seems to happen. And I find myself climbing the mountain again. But this time I go, hmm. I think I've been here before. I'm revisiting. And so I see, well, I think I've seen that tree before. I think, I think Apostle mentioned this Thursday, Thursday evening. And so then life happens again, the cycles of life, because Ecclesiastes says what has been will be again. And I'm climbing the mountain and I'm going, I've been here before. I know, I've seen those trees. I know this path. Oh, wait, there's a sign. Didn't see it before. But in God's timing, he opened my eyes to see his signs to point me in a direction in my journey up the mountain. You see, when we miss God, we just get back on the bus, back into his timing his move in signs and revelation, and he will reveal what we need for that day, for that hour, and for that season. Linear is you're hopeless. You you miss God, you can never be used again. But God says no. Say I'm gonna that again. Well, linear. If we miss God and sin. Let's say we go through a divorce. Western civilization says in the church. you'll never be able to minister again. You, there's no way we will not ordain you. We will not commission you because Isn't you have something? been divorced. Nowhere in scripture does it say that, but we have taken a Western Greek mindset, which is based upon works. And the Greek mindset is based upon works and God's time and mindset is based upon grace. Okay. Do you and, see that? And restoration and restoration mm -hmm. and reconciliation. So, Genesis 1.14 is the first mention in Scripture in the Hebrew of Moedim. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let, there, and let them be for signs, say signs. Signs. For seasons and for days and years. Okay, right there. For signs, seasons, for days and years, actually for signs and seasons is the Hebrew word Moedim. And it means holy convocation or anniversary dates. So like I said, these are not just Jewish feasts, but they are God's feasts for all his children. Amen? And so will we be doing this for all eternity? Well, according to Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 through 19, 
in the millennial reign of Christ, we will be on the earth and we will be celebrating these feasts. We will be coming to Jerusalem. And this Zechariah has this prophecy about the millennial reign of Christ, the thousand years. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king and the Lord of hosts and keep the what? The feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth until Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. We'll look at verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have, uh, that have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to the feast, keep the feast of the tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to the keep the feast of tabernacles. Now, not everyone will be able to go to Jerusalem in the millennial reign of Christ, but each nation will send representatives for us. And they will go and they will celebrate the feast of the Lord during the thousand year reign of Christ. I'll look at another passage. What did Paul say about the feast? I get this even from my own family. Oh, that's Old Testament. That's legalism. You shouldn't be a part of this. Uh, we're in the New Covenant. We're in the New Testament. These kind of things. And look what the Apostle Paul says. I like to call him Rabbi Paul. 1 Corinthians 5.8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. What was the old leaven in the New Testament? The leaven of uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, okay? The leaven of religion, okay? This is not to be religious. It's to be joyous, happy, freeing, relating to God through the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, uh, neither with leaven of malice and wickedness, so we better not be hateful. <laughs> Are wicked, okay, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. What, what does, what do we, what do we like that God is attracted to us? It is a broken, contrite spirit, okay. He will no way cast out. Look at what he told the Colossians, Apostle Paul, Rabbi Paul, uh, Colossians two sixteen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Or in the respect of an holy day, that would be a feast, holy convocation, or a new moon, that's the calendar, God's calendar, or of the Sabbath, of the weekly Sabbath. You know, in the Acts, in Acts chapter 4, when they went house to house and they shared with each other in common, that was Shabbat. That was the Shabbat gathering. And in a Hebrew understanding, the table, the family table, was called the family altar. Is it any wonder in our society that it is difficult for families to eat together anymore? Because Satan knows if we can be so busy, because that's where the discipling, that's where the nurturing, and that's where the, the love is shown for the families. And blessing is released. Acts 1821, the Apostle Paul said this. But begged them for well, saying, I must by all means keep the feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus to Jerusalem. So Paul was saying, by all means, he was going to keep the feast. Amen? All right. A couple other passages. Now, we have been fine-tuning this message for 23 years. And what God is finally telling us is to teach the body of Christ what Prophet Nina shared with us today. How to house the Holy Ghost, the manifest presence in our daily walk. Okay? And so Genesis 2, 2, 3 is mentioned here. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day. From all his work which he had made. So he rested on the day, verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which created and made. And so in Genesis 2 2, watch this, 
God rested in the day and he rested on the day. And our day has a sound. Our day has a purpose. Our day has a frequency. Our day has a purpose. But we're not taught that in, in Christianity. We're not taught that in, in, even in seminary. We're not taught that, that today when you woke up, you had a purpose. You had a sound. You had a frequency. You had an assignment for this day. How many were glad they were here today for the assignment God had for us? Right? Now, another part of that is found in Psalms 118, verses 24. It's called the Mode Ani. That's just say that with me. Mode Ani. Now, you just know Hebrew. Okay? Mode Ani. Is this the day the Lord hath made? Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And every morning when your feet hit the floor, before you do what you do when you get out of bed, you, the Jewish mindset, the Hebrew mindset, is I have a chance to fulfill God's purpose and assignment and hear his sound and hear his frequency. That's why worship is about frequency. That's why praise is about that. And so this is called the Mode Ani. Well, our day was created by God to carry his glory, not to carry the cares of this world. So when we enter into our day, that day with a frequency, that day with a sound, then once we hear from heaven, then we begin to voice heaven's decrees and operate and walk in them. Now, the picture of this hebraically is in the creation where God created Adam, all right? And so that's the um, Southern Texas way of saying Adam, I guess, or Hebraic name is Adam. And the picture in the Madras, which is a commentary of the Torah, the Pentateuch, okay? It's agent sages, writings, and reflections on what took place. And so th this is the picture that they give you in the creation, God creating Adam. And at that time, before the flood, our earth had maybe six feet of topsoil. And God prepared a cast in the earth. Have you ever worked with plaster of Paris? And making a cast with plaster of Paris, you know, that, that sweet little couple, and they put their hands together, and then they place it in the bucket of plaster of Paris, and it, you pull it out, and it hardens, and then the artist chisels away, and you have this great image of their beautiful hands joined together. Yes, that's what the picture of uh, God creating Adam, and he put him in the earth for three days. And on the sixth day, God came, pulled away the dirt, laid on top of Adam, and he breathed nose to nose, mouth to mouth, stretched out over Adam. And he breathed away, breathed into his nostrils. And Adam, it says, walked with God in the cool of the day. Now, Adam, their understanding of Adam walking with God is when Adam in his day would prophetically worship, would prophetically have prophetic utterances before the great God I am. And out of that prophetic worship, Miss God would arise and walk in the day with Adam. That's why it's important that we, out of prophetic utterances and our cry unto the Lord, God will come in his presence and walk with us. Now, Adam walked with God, and the picture there is as Adam walked, the trees would yield the fruit. As Adam walked with God, the leaves would turn. The grass would lay down. And Adam walked with God in revelation and wisdom and understanding. And out of his prophetic utterances, the glory of the Lord would rise. And God desires for you and I to carry his glory in 
the day. So get this picture. So Adam is relating to God spirit to spirit, face to face. Adam in Hebrew, his name means face of blood. Okay? And they would walk and communicate spirit to spirit. And when they communicated, Adam would begin to prophesy the future through the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And as they walked, the leaves mm -hmm. would lean over. The grass would lean to them to cushion their walk. And all of creation was literally doing what it was created to do, and that is to uh, minister to man. And respond. And the call of the day yes. was the fog that came out with a Shekinah kabod, weighty glory that uh, Apostle Prophet Nina spoke about this afternoon. That weighty glory. We prayed for someone this week, and they said, I feel heavy. It was last night. That was you, wasn't it? I feel heavy. That was the kabod, the weightiness that was in the garden. Okay? And so God's intent for us is in the day, the mode ani, to house his glory. Because in the glory will be the revelation and the wisdom that we will need to walk in. In the glory, we will receive the strategic weapons, the strategic assignments, and uh, how to carry them out. Um, anointing is one thing, but the glory will move us past the anointing. And so our day was created that we would war in our day for our tomorrow. Because in our day, we carry the sound of heaven. We are to connect, come in agreement with, and release the decree on the earth. So I war in my day for my tomorrow. Now, I'm not in my tomorrow. But Jesus is. And my tomorrow is perfect because I'm not there yet. Okay? Did, did you get that? Okay. Our tomorrow is perfect because we've not gotten there yet. See, but in our Jesus tomorrow is, is healing. There. Yes. But Jesus is there and he's waiting on us. He's awake. And see, and our we day. are getting the agenda. Mm -hmm. We are getting the, the purpose and the plan today for our future. How did this? Wonderful conference come about because God gave a vision and a purpose to Jeanette and her team about where we are today. Now we're going to dig here a little bit, okay? Because when we get the vision of the day, the assignment of our day, it will change our tomorrow. Because as we war today, we will walk in victory tomorrow. Our day is planting seed. Our day is speaking forth and decreeing a thing, and it shall be established. And so how does this work out? You see, this revelation, you have to walk out. We call it fleshing it out. In every argument, which I'm sure you never have arguments, but in every argument, in every response to a situation, God is reminding us, go back to the purpose of our day because we are warring in our day for our tomorrow. And so uh, we, we've shared this testimony before, but we're going to share it again that um, last August, um, you know, life can hit and life can hit fast and hard, right? And so um, we had been going through some things with our business that we were warring over. OK, and so on that particular morning, the first of August, Jim runs into the room. He's already up, which means he's checked our accounts, which means he's checked our business. He's checked the flow. How many can relate to that? First thing in the morning, you check your bank app, right? He runs into the room. Now, I'm going to preface it with this. Because we had been warring for months and it was getting ridiculous. We were at a level of trust, and we were walking in faith. And, and so the enemy says, well, I'm just going to put the nail in the coffin. 
coffin, right? I'm just going to hit him below the belt. And so, but I had been praying. I said, now, Lord, I know we're walking through a season of faith right now. We haven't had to walk through that in years. And so we're walking through a particular season of faith because of what was going on, uh, buffeting against us in our business. And so um, I said, you know, Lord, I just whispered and said, I thank you for at the beginning of the next month, everything will be provided. And I just kept on going. But God heard my whisper. August 1st, um, he told me the night before, he said, you know, Deb, God has just done such a work that everything we needed for that month, God had already pre and provided. It was supernatural. The enemy said, oh no, oh no, I'm going to come in. He runs into the bedroom. Debbie, get up. Debbie, 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 get up. You will not believe what happened. I was freaking. I was freaking because I went into our, my bank app and all the money that God had provided on the 1st of August to pay all the bills. And that's not normal for us. A lot of times we live in provision well, because of that battle, week, that battle we were battles, in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was there for all the month. Our bank account got hacked and all that total amount of money for our month's bills was, was stolen from us. Okay. So I've, I, I wake up, get me a cup of coffee so I can think. And I go in and I looked at Jim because I know him. There's something about Holy Ghost and coffee that works. And because I know him, he is a type A man. All right. And I bless the Lord for that. But it can be a challenge to live with. And so um, I turned to him and I said, not one word out of our mouth. Negative. Not one word of fear. We cannot give fear respect. We cannot give this any respect. So I said, we're going to war for this in the glory. I said, so let's put on some worship music. Let's get up. Let's sing. Let's dance. Let's cry out to God, and we will receive revelation and wisdom on what to do and for supernatural provision in the glory. It was a shift that had to take place in our day. And so we went into his presence knowing that when the glory is released, there is protection, there is promises, and there is provision. And so we decided in our day, we would practice what we're preaching, and we would war for our tomorrow. Well, see, when we go through trouble, how many have ever been through trouble? Hello, Jesus. I mean, can relate to what we're talking about. Come oh, on, wow. let's let's just we're just real here, okay? And our tendency is when we go through trouble, when you go through the day of trouble, we begin to freak out and walk in fear and doubt and worry and unbelief. Okay. And so what happens is we are not depending upon God's glory. To guide us and protect us and provide for us. And so we start dealing with trouble from a fleshly, soulless realm. And God wants to shift our mindset so that we begin to roar in the heavenlies and worship with God so the glory comes down and gives us supernatural miracles signs and wonders you Hallelujah. cannot be detoured by the contradictions that come you cannot give contradictions respect you'll drown and so what we received wisdom from the lord and we did our part and of course we're hitting a brick wall and we're getting a pushback and we just kept going into worship kept decreeing the promises of God. We kept testifying of the breakthrough. We testified, we seated heaven with a testimony, even though the contradiction was staring in our face. And we, uh, what was going to take, if anything at all, 
uh, maybe four weeks to six weeks. They'd have to do research what what came in and hack who stole the money they, and all that told, stuff. The bank told me twenty weeks. Yeah. We'd make a claim and then possibly. And God, what God did, what they said would take weeks, God did in four days supernaturally. Okay. I'm going to give you another example. Jim has a brain aneurysm, and uh, he walked in that uh, brain aneurysm for seven days. He had a headache. Now, I never asked him how bad was that headache. I never asked him to explain to me the headache. I just turned to him. I laid hands on him, and I prayed over him for healing and went on. We just in went fact, on. In fact, I was scheduled to speak. Yeah, at Freedom Outpost in Troy, and I had to call Apostle and say I can't come. I have a severe headache. Remember and that? I, remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I, that weekend I was scheduled to come. Well, I was in the yeah. middle of a brain aneurysm. And so seven days we walked in faith for that headache. And you know, the seventh morning it's like you know maybe we should go and get it checked out. And uh, so we do. And I go, oh, Mr. Layman, you have a brain aneurysm, bleeding on the brain. We're having to transport you to another hospital. And so we did. And, and we're walking through that. But here's, here's what uh, happened. Understanding warring in your day. We know that healing's our portion. I'm in intensive care. And I, I left Jim sitting up in bed, drugged, but sitting up in bed. And uh, I went to pick my son up, uh, our adult son up at the airport, and we got in about three, four in the morning, and I'm going back into ICU, and the, the nurse hits me, comes out and meets me and says, oh, Mrs. Lehman, Mrs. Lehman, Mrs. Lehman, we've done all we can do. There's nothing more we can do. I've thrown at him everything we can throw at him. The doctors are in there working over him, and uh, it's grave. And I said, well, thank you. I understand that. And I walked in the room and I saw these five doctors with long coats working over Jim. And so my son and I moved to a corner in the room and I'm, I'm seeing and I'm going, now, now, Jesus, I see what's going on in the physical. I'm not denying that. But the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. The word of God says that by the stripes of you, Jesus, we're healed. Healing's my portion. And what I'm seeing is not in your word. And I said, Jesus, the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. And the hospitalist comes up to me, Mrs. Lehman, Mrs. Lehman, I just want you to know it's grave. It's very grave. And I said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I so see in the grave. Yeah. I said, Thank you very much. I guess I thought we were going to fall apart, but she was messing with me because I was praying in tongues and I didn't want to get off the wall. And so I'm, I'm backing up in the corner of the room and I look up and I go, Israel. And I began to name Missouri and I named states where we were to go to churches and teach and preach. And when we were to be back in Israel and I began to speak our prophetic future. I began to speak our prophetic promises and I roared and I said, listen, this brain aneurysm is a squatter to what God has called us to do, to what God has said we will do. It's a squatter. It must leave. Healing is his portion. The blood speaks a better word. I want nothing more of this. Get out of my face. So they take Jim down to surgery. Remember, she's very governmental. She wanted to be a lawyer. And so I don't win any arguments <laughs> at our house because she's a lawyer and she's very governmental. But what I mean by that, she takes authority. She does not mess with the devil. She doesn't let the devil mess with her. Okay. And, and so. Well, God, God healed him miraculously. You know, they, they, we prayed. I got an opportunity to pray with them, with my children before they took him into surgery. And, um, we, we walked with them all the way to an outer room and we met all of the neurological team. We met the anesthesiologist and the surgeon was telling us what he was going to do. He was going to go in and clamp off the aneurysm, stop the bleeding. And he was also going to do the third spinal tap um, to remove the fluid from the brain because of the trauma 
to the brain. And uh, he said, then I'm going to clamp it off and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to give you your options. And I looked and I said, what options? There are no options. And I took Jim by the hand and he came out of unconsciousness and he looked at me and he said, oh, Deb, I'm so sorry. I said, Jim, you have walked in a miracle for seven days. God's got this. And in Hebrew, do you know what the words God's got this means? Listen very carefully. In Hebrew, God's got this means God's got all of this. He's got it all. He's got this. That's what it means. Here's, here, here's a Hebrew understanding. <laughs> We know that God is yesterday, today, and forever. That Jesus is yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. And we know that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we understand he's the beginning, and we understand he's the end. But in a Hebrew understanding, he is not just the beginning and the end. He's everything in between. And he's so got have it. you ever heard anybody that mm -hmm. knew something about something that were experts and they say, well, they know, let's say a pilot know, knows about planes. And you will say about that pilot, he knows planes from A to Z. What we're really saying is he knows, he knows taking off, he knows landing, and he knows everything in between. Okay, that's our God. That's why we war today for our tomorrow. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to walk out the contradictions. But I prayed with Jim and I said, God's got this. He's had you in his hands for seven days. Most people with a brain aneurysm, you hear of them just falling dead, or they might live a four hours, or they might live a day. But you know, it's it's quite an event. And uh so I said. To Jim, I said, we've gone seven days in a miracle. What's, the, what's one more day? It was the eighth day. And the number eight is the day of new beginnings. I said, Jim, we're in a new beginning. I said, this will be our finest hour. You see, when you war in your day, you cannot give the contradictions respect. And you must see that that battle that that test, that, that which you are facing will be your finest hour of testimony. You see, there's power in your testimony. And you will war in your day prophetically for your tomorrow. Through the testimony, what God did in your past. And his promises. Okay. And the prophetic words spoken over you. Get out your prophetic Sorry. words that have been spoken over you over the last 20 years. Get them out. Begin to read them out loud in the atmosphere. Begin to speak them. Bring them to God your Father in remembrance. You said this. This is the prophetic word that you said. And begin to stand in war in your day for your so tomorrow. So we're going to get ready and make some decree and declarations in unity. But one more thing, and then we're going to have you stand, and I have them on the overhead. Now, how does this work? How does this work? How many have children that you know their purpose and their destiny, and they're living in the wrong field, in the wrong way, and they're not even close to what God promised you about your kids? You begin to war on their day, this day, for their tomorrow, and you begin to see prophetically what God promised. Children who are not living for the Lord. Children that are living uh, in, a, in, in a, uh, adultery or fornication or homosexuality or drugs or addiction. How about for your ministry? How about for your business? How about for uh, the people around you that you minister, even the people that you work with, and you know God has given you a, a promise or a prophetic prayer of understanding of what their future is going to look like, right? Guess what? When you start warring like Debbie did for me, okay, and you see the future, 
So let's just talk about healing for a moment. So if God can use medicine to take a broken arm and put it in a cast in six to eight weeks, in the future, guess what? Those bones mend stronger than before. Then why should we wait six to eight weeks in the future? Because God is not bound by time. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are able to reach out into our future and receive our healing now. Come on, church. What about finances owed you inheritance? This is what I'm doing. I'm standing in my day, calling it from my tomorrow into to manifest in my day. Amen? You see the importance of the day that God has created for us? It's a part of time that he carved out of eternity for us to take authority in our day so we will manifest his glory in our lives. And things will begin to shift. And we do this one circumstance at a time in the day that he sets before you. Now stand with me. I want, to, I want you to do this. I learned this in business meetings where they had PowerPoint presentations and they were talking so fast, I couldn't write the notes down fast enough. So uh, uh, Prophet uh, Rhonda's doing this. Robert's doing this. Take your cell phone and take a picture of these declarations. That way you can take them home. You can use this with your people. Okay? Use this in your ministry. Let, let me get out of the way here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So we're trying to uh, infuse a vision of God's timing and purpose for you and how to walk out into your destiny. All right. And the day is only one part of it. God not only has the day, he has the weekly Shabbat, he has the monthly focus where he's speaking, and then he has the yearly feast. And then God wants you to recognize the time and seasons that you're in, okay? And so you're receiving just a snippet tonight to open up your mind to receive a vision of God's timing. Because when we walk in sync and in step with God's timing, Things begin, blessings begin to flow. All manner of events, places, purposes, people begin to come to you because you're walking in God's ordained times and seasons. The last thing we'll say, and we're going to read the decrees, is it's we're coming into 5785. Now, this past year has been 5784, the year of the open door. Okay, and we've talked about the doors. But what doors? The doors of the family, the doors to war over in government, the doors to war, war over the sanctuary, the dwelling places, the glory of the Lord. Um, and those, uh, there's one other door um, that's not coming to my mind right now. But uh, God was wanting uh, to have us move through those doors, preparing to move through those doors. 5785. Those doors are open, and God wants you to connect your thoughts, your speech, and your action together in his timing so that you walk through the doors and you manifest that which he has promised with great acceleration. And anything you put your hands to, his hand is going to be pushing you through into that place of manifestation so, and destiny. Yeah, I'm just going to say this about 5785. That begins October the 3rd at Rosh Hashanah. Five is the number of grace. Grace in Hebrew means God's supernatural to be able to accomplish something that you can't do on your own. Oh, Jesus. Okay. It's double grace, 5785. It is the fifth alphabet letter of the hebrew alphabet which is hey h-e-i and hey literally is a picture of god's blessing in worship and praise so the old hebrew pictogram because hebrew is an alphanumeric pictorial language is uh the original 
way they used to write it is a picture of a man praising God. So this is going to be year starting October 3rd through next year, 2025, and next fall of 2025, a year of taking our praise and worship to a whole nother level. Now, we'll teach on this later. We'll have to. Yes, we'll There's teach on this. so much. So let's, I'll Wait, do the I'm going to give him a scripture. Okay, I'm going to give him yeah. a scripture. We're going to get to the decrees. But I'm going to give you a scripture to war in your day over. Okay? And because we're, of what we're coming into and what you're going to be manifesting. And it's Deuteronomy 28. All right? And that is a scripture um, I would draw your attention to to meditate over, to pray out loud, to speak over your life. Because this is what God's original intent is for your year. Listen to this. If Now, remember, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will, get this, set you high above all the nations on the earth. That's a word for the Navajo nations. Because he wants the awakening and revival in this land to be a, proto, a prototype of the other nations to follow. That's the weighty glory that you're carrying into this season. He said, I'm going to set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading bowl. Or a trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. This is a promise to war over. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. When the enemy comes against you this year, you go to this scripture and you say, No, God said the Lord will send his angels to war over me. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but from um, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. We don't even have time to talk about the Hebrew implication of the hand of God on you this year. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on earth. If you keep the commands of the Lord, you God, and walk in obedience to him. Then all the people, here's the testimony, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. You can read this, war over this, this coming year, because God, this is God's intent for you to walk in, but you will have to war in your day for it. Out of your prophetic utterances, the glory will arise and you will walk in your strategies to this manifestation of victory God has for you. So declare with me and decree and declare with me out loud. We decree and declare, come on. We, we decree, decree and, and declare, declare according, according to, to Job 22, 28. 28. You will declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways, and Genesis 2, 2 through 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work with which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. We decree and declare that we will answer the call of our day. We will rise up in worship and prophetic utterances. We will hear the sound of heaven and be his voice in the day and on the day. We will walk out our assignment in his glory. Amen. All right. Amen. Come on. I boldly decree and declare. We will see and experience a mighty revival and a pouring of the Holy Spirit. Awaken our hearts. Open our eyes to see and our feet to walk in your way. We decree our marriages and our families will walk in wisdom and grace. 
Our home will be a place of refuge and love. Hallelujah. We decree and declare deliverances from bondage, oppression, and addictions. We receive your miraculous power in our lives, setting us free. We believe in your power to bring signs, wonders, and breakthroughs. We decree and declare that we will witness and be partakers in your glory. Your presence will fill our lives and bring peace, joy, and hope to those around us. Your manifest presence in us will reflect your love and your glory. Amen. We decree and declare it is your boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit that will enable us to be witnesses and manifest your signs and wonders, confirming your word. We decree and declare your wisdom and discernment will bring forth clarity and understanding of your ways. By your spirit, we will discern between good and evil. Hallelujah. The last one, I think, we've got two more. We decree and declare supernatural acceleration in every area of our lives. Come on, church. Walk in renewed strength and the ability to soar above challenges. We will walk in divine timing, discerning the time, season, and hour. We will not and not think. Hallelujah. We decree and declare we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and our God shall supply all our needs. We will trust in you, O Lord, for financial provision, resources, and opportunities. Thank you for the opening doors of abundance in unexpected ways. Let's give God a shout. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Come on. Okay. How many? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many are going to say, I'm going to war on my day? How many are going to say, I'm going to take my position and war in my day? That's right, because you've answered the call with a yes, have you not? You've answered the call and your assignment with a yes. And so we bless the Lord that he has, has given such a vision to the body that we will take up our authority and we'll war in our day. And we will testify. Oh, we'll testify. Say, say one more thing about the testimony. The Hebraic understanding of testimony is it is a prophetic praise and worship for your future. So we, we know the scripture in Revelation chapter 12, where we overcome the accuser of brethren by the word of our testimony, by the blood. And, the and not loving our lives to and ourselves. Itself. So the testimony is so important. And what the devil tries to get us to do is not share our testimony. Because he is saying nobody wants to hear it. He is saying you're being selfish. No, we're giving God all the glory and praise and honor for everything he does in our lives. And so when we share a testimony, someone else who is going through life or that same issue or situation, their faith will be encouraged. Their faith will be encouraged. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so here's how the rubber meets the road with the testimony. So when you hear your brother, your fellow pastor, or ministry person next to you give a testimony of what God has done and how he showed up, in Hebraic understanding, if you'll celebrate, if you'll praise the Lord and not mumble and grumble and say to God, well, how come he got it and I didn't? And how come they're walking out this and I'm not? If you'll stop. And understand that if you celebrate his testimony, her testimony, her victory, you're next in line. Did you hear that? See, we don't have to be jealous or envious or anymore. No, 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 no. Because when you stand and you give that testimony, 
I'm cheering you on. I'm shouting and jumping for joy because I know I'm next in line. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We are very honored and humbled to be a part of this leadership conference. And we love you. And we're going to be praying for you. And we bless you in the mighty name of Yeshua, King Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we'll put it back up. I can, and I can send them to Becky, and she can send them out to everybody. But yeah, I can do that. Give me a second. Walk through your day and decree. Make these decrees. Do not come off that wall. Amen. Amen. So we like, the other thing we like to, when we're doing this is we like to resp get responses. Something that was taught tonight, a nugget, a golden nugget. What resonate? You got a golden nugget. Something that you learned tonight that you didn't know or something the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost just quickened in your spirit. Just one at a time. Yes, Nina. Amen. That's a good word, isn't it? Someone else. Someone else. Yeah. Late now. You can do it. But that's so true because the word of God is the word of God and nothing can come against it. And he had a very serious situation. Mine was quite similar. And I knew the very same thing. And so I had done things like making sure everything was in order, not looking for something, but this nurse mind of mine, I was walking it out. And then it was like, like I said, what am I doing? God reminded me of a word and that had not happened. And so this couldn't happen. And so anyway, I continued to do what I was supposed to do and got an excellent report from the doctor. Praise, Praise God. God. All right, now here we practice. That was a testimony. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Why? Why? We're next in line. We're next in line. Yes. War for, we war for our tomorrow today. Because Jesus is already in our tomorrow. So today I'm warned for my tomorrow. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? A nugget. Something Holy Spirit quickened. I get I get up every morning and do faith confessions, but I didn't realize this is what it was. So I, I could quote the, the prayers back. They come back to me throughout the day because it's certain ones I meditate on every day, get up and declare and decree, but I didn't understand and have the revelation about warring for your tomorrow today. Yeah. So isn't that awesome? Someone else? Anybody? Yeah, we I found it very interesting that even this morning at breakfast I was with Robert Sloman. And we were just kicking around the different types of testimonies. So this was really, really good about how the devil comes in and we don't even know it. It's a scheme against us to dumb down our testimony, even though it not might, it's not as dramatic maybe as somebody else has gone through something more serious. But it's the, word of, it's the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. You know what I mean? So it's important, like you were just saying. So the emphasis yeah. that our, our testimony, how we came to Christ, is somebody else has that, is in that same footstep. Amen. You know, in that same footprint. Amen. Amen. That scripture in Revelation is we overcome by the testimony in the blood of the Lamb. Of course, we all know what the blood of the Lamb is. But the other understanding of the testimony is I have a relationship with God Almighty. Amen. And He's with me. 
okay? And he's talking to me, and we're walking together every day. We can't use the testimonies from two years ago. Right. We need to use the testimony. God is doing something today. And that's why we can say, we can overcome Satan because I have a relationship today, and it's ongoing, and I trust and thank God for the blood of Yeshua that he sent and died for me. That way I can have that relationship with the one living and eternal God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good, isn't it? Amen. When you talked about his aneurysm and he was in the bed and you called it a squatter. And that was very, like, I just grabbed that. Yes, praise God. I want to tell, this is a word for someone. You do not give cancer respect. Because you'll pull out your, if you'll pull out the Bible <laughs> and just read his prophetic words over you, his promises. Uh, pull out the prophetic words that God said you'd be going to the nations. That God said this, or that, and you tell cancer it's a squatter. It has to submit and come up under the prophetic promises of God and do not give it respect. Yeah, it's very true. We, that testimony, and I think I shared it with you all about when George was stroking out in the hospital in the ER. And yeah, it's broken out. And it was like, you have to stay seated, you know, in your authority. You're like, at that time, you're not a wife. You're not a mother. It's like you're you stand in that authority because you know that is not the will of God. That is not the purpose of God to take out our life early like that. And so God, you know, did the same thing, broke it, and He's here with us today. But it was a, it was a but it's a curse of death. It was death trying to take Him. But it's God. Praise God. This is about an aneurysm. Uh, my brother-in-law, he comes from the Crow Nation. They've been together, my sister and him, for 20 years or so. And um, I got a call around July 3rd or 4th that he had a brain aneurysm. He fell. And so he was in the hospital. So I was praying in the spirit. My sister's Pentecostal. She prays also. And, you know, just praying. And then on, um, I believe, 4th July. Okay. So the next day, he was awake in the hospital bed. And he recognized my sister, his wife, and his family members. And then I, later that night or the next day, he passed away. So God gave him a chance to say goodbye to his loved ones before he left. And I believe that's what God did with him. Praise God. There's a, a nugget that you had released about, uh, you talked about the healing of the bone and how you we can reach into the future, that, the future and pull it into the now. And that is huge. It's, I took my, we, we had been in a healing revival and my daughter fell and um, had a compound fracture in her arm. And on the way to the hospital, we prayed for that divine healing. I said, now it's going to take six weeks with a cast and all that. We got there and they were going to do surgery and all that. And I thought, well, I'm here to pray for somebody. So I was per I was looking for someone who needed healing. And we're the only ones in the ER. But they, uh, I know, La Bonner, And uh, they ushered her. It. But here's the thing. I was praying that prayer. I said, now, God, you can go into tomorrow, get that bone healed, and bring it to us. I don't know when he did it. I don't know if it was when she was being x-rayed. Or when I prayed for the little girl outside of x-ray who had been in an accident and broke her neck and her back. And I just went over to the mother and I said, can I just pray with you 
and the, you know, and they're scared. Who's going to turn down prayer? Little, little babies injured. And I just laid hands on and prayed. Now, I won't know what God did till I get to heaven. Okay. But by the time we got back, she's on a gurney, hooked up to morphine, got my daughter back into the room where the uh, doctor came in and was uh, coming in with a surgeon. He comes in and pulls out the x-ray and goes, oh, I've got the wrong x-ray and walks out the room. I follow him and I see him go to the nurse's desk and ask for Katie Lehman's x-ray. And I'm watching and he, she, he pulls it out. That's it. And there's this board where they can put the x-ray on the board and they can see it. He went and got three other doctors. They came over and he's looking. He said, I saw she had a fracture. It was compound. We were, I told him we were going to do And they couldn't find anything. So he's baffled. He comes back in the room and tries to explain, I saw it. I felt it. But there was nothing there. Not even a hairline fracture. And he, he, he was so baffled, he said, well, I need to wrap it up with an ace bandage and send you home. Okay? Okay? So, and I'm thinking if God will do that in healing, he'll do that in our finances. He'll do that with our visions and our, what he will bring it to us if we get a hold of that truth. Well, you talked about worrying for our children. I know we pray and pray for our young ones, our loved ones, our families. But tonight, I know my family is going to be saved. And that's what the Lord says. Amen. Um, one of the things you said was uh, that making a decision uh, in the glory of God and not in the soulless realm. I don't, I don't know why, but like that's profound to me because it's like I get to make a decision with God Almighty on the inside of me about the day that I don't even know what's coming, but he does. And it's like I have that inside of me. I mean, you hear about it all the time, and like, yeah, as, as, uh, especially as preachers, you know, you preach about it, but then something happens to where it's like it shifts your whole thinking. I was just sitting here, I was just like, and what you were saying on the inside of me, and to speak it out, and knowing that the creator of heaven and earth is intertwined in, in everything that we're doing and saying, and it's like, why have I been living this low when I could have been living this high this whole time? That's beautiful. And it's like, I, 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 I can't say anything. I don't well, know what else well, to say. As men, we try to figure things out. Because we're, we're analytical and we're logical. And, and, you know, we fix things, right? And so, okay, if I do this, it'll respond this way. If I do this, that'll happen. And all of a sudden, we're trying to figure this stuff out, and God's saying, stop, stop. That's all in your mind, intellect, and will. I want to do it in the glory. And it's a it's a practice. It's a practice. I, I know it's late, but I have to share this with you. How do you hear the voice of God when you're going through that? Here's a little, four, four points real quick. I'm not, I can preach on them and teach on them for a class. How do you hear the voice of God? You settle yourself down. Somehow you make a switch, either by praying in tongues, listening to worship, however you need to do to meditating on the word, you settle yourself down. That's the first step. Secondly, you fix your eyes on Jesus. How do you do that in your mind's eye, in your spirit, man? So just a little practice. Close your eyes. Everybody close their eyes. Can you see your house where you live? If you see your house where you live, just raise your hand. Everybody. Okay. You, you can see Jesus now. Okay. Now, can you see Jesus? When you see Jesus, raise your hand. See Jesus? Okay. So, you fix your eyes on Jesus. Then, thirdly, you begin to flow in the spontaneous 
thoughts of the Holy Spirit. And fourthly, you write it down. Don't argue with it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to, at this point, don't even ask, was that biblical? Because once you do that, then you start reading it. If it doesn't line up to Scripture, even though it's a rhema word, the foundation is the, is, is the living word, right? And that's how in every situation, you settle yourself down, make that trigger, you fix your eyes on Jesus, you flow in the spontaneous thoughts of the Holy Spirit, and you write it down. And every time you're shifting from trying to figure things out in this in this realm, and you're moving into the glory realm. Does that make sense? I mean, it's it's a discipline and it's a practice, but it's a very simple. Let me say it to you one if you're writing down. Say it to you one more time. You 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 settle yourself down somehow. Make a tr trigger trigger yourself out of a solar realm, out of a flesh realm, left brain to right brain by worship, whatever you need to do, and then fix your eyes on Jesus. And they begin to flow in the spontaneous thoughts of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and write things down. Okay? Very simple way. We just see the year that God has ahead of you. And what I saw in the vision um, was uh, like before the Kentucky Derby and the horses are being led to the gate. And as soon as that last horse is led to the gate, they swing wide open and they take off in acceleration. That's the year God has for you. Everything, everything you just said to the vision you just had, God has been speaking to me about. Like, it's like I was in training since the day uh, our marriage fell apart, right? Remember, I was saying that I was completely and totally alone in this dark pit, but uh, I wasn't alone. I had God Almighty, and he was teaching me that. The first thing he said was, give thanks, right? Give thanks and then sing. And I would tell my my congregation, you know, in the middle of like him, you know, yelling at me or saying all these things and just running away, I would turn around to the corner of my room and I would sing, Right. I would sing Jesus, lover of my soul. Right. And, and I had to like force myself to focus on Jesus, force go. myself to focus on on the word of God, because I knew without a doubt right then and there that his truth was real. Right. And it's a, you said do not or you cannot give con contradictions any respect. That is what he was teaching me. Right. I, I see with my eyes. I hear with my natural eyes. And I know it seems totally pointless, pointless. And it seems like it's not going to happen. Right. And all these lies are just being poured into my mind. But in my spirit, man, I'm like, nope, nope. It's, you know, he showed me this vision. He showed me my husband on the pulpit. And it wasn't about him being up there. It was about what God could do. It was about where, how far he could take us. And it's just, it's amazing to have like one confirmation after another, one confirmation after another. So you had vision preaching on a platform. Yeah, and he was on fire. Yeah. And God was showing you how to, yeah. to, to, be, to be, come to fruition. And just the other day, I was telling him, I feel like a racehorse. You know how they bring him up to the gate and you're like ready and, you, you know, they have the doors closed and you have all your other horses ready. And I'm like, I'm about to be let, you know, let loose. And, and that's exactly what you just said. So everything, everything's been. Come on, let's rejoice. with He just prophesied over her own life. I'm about ready to be let loose. I'm prophesying. I'm agreeing with you. This conference, the gates have swung wide open, and you are let loose. Not about ready to. You guys are let loose. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. We're praying for uh, Apostle Pete right now. All right. Yeah, George, go ahead. He has a uh, I don't know, muscle or something right here rib cage on the right side but i'm going to speak what i you're talking about takeaways the old car engines that had the points in the distributor cap mm -hmm. 
That's what's happening to you all. And everyone in this room. Got it. Up. And you Turn understand up. this really well. You got to hold that distributor cap. He is adjusting that timing. The old cars, that's how you did it. You adjusted that timing. You listened to the engine. Or you had the timing light. He's adjusting your timing. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray. Let's all reach out to Apostle Pete right now. We pray, Father God, for Apostle Pete. We come in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says, through the blood of Jesus, there is healing. By his stripes, Apostle Pete is healed. We come against this pulled muscle, rib cage, pain. We ask it to leave. Because your word says that Jesus took our pain upon the cross, so we have no pain. We speak to that pain, leave right now in Jesus' name. Father God, we bind all disease, sickness that is coming against his body right now in Jesus' name. And we command it be loosed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Apostle Pete, on a pain level, what, what are you experiencing, like 1 to 10? Like a doctor would say, what's your pain level right now? Stingray. Okay, yeah, so there's a pulled muscle there from a cough probably. And Lord God, the attack was divination. There's, there's a medicine man or witchcraft that has been spoken over his life. And we bind that right now. We command it to leave. It, ha it cannot have any authority. We loose it in Jesus' name. The power of agreement, we read it this weekend. Matthew 18, 19, and 20, where two or three agree on anything touching heaven, it is gone, and the blood of Jesus is over him. And right now, that spirit is gone and has no authority over his body, his life, his destiny, and purpose. We war today for his tomorrow. Hallelujah. He is going to be going to Israel and taking pastors to Israel. He is going to be literally so busy, enlarge his ministry and his influence, Lord. And so the spirit of Stingray, you must be gone in Jesus' name. We command you to be gone in Jesus' name. And we loose upon him power, mighty, warring power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 So now what are you feeling? What, what, are, you, what are you feeling physically? Sure. Okay. So, uh, Apostle, go ahead. Uh, declare it. We'll come in agreement. Yes, Lord.
Father God, you said that the glory of the Lord is in us. Apostle Prophet Ninus shared that today. And the glory of the Lord is in Apostle Pete. Right now, may the glory rise. Rise. May the glory rise. The glory rise. Yes. Hallelujah. Every breath he bring uh, he breathes in, the glory of God will be, be in him. Hallelujah. Boca sarabasondoroko yalabaseta. Metoroko yarabasondoroko yarabasondoko pasita. Bekesito roko mario baset roko mayabo santa. Ebo shereki. Betaro shinderebekita. Bebero ba. Ho! Erebo sanda. Ho! Ebaro basitoro ko palaba sando. Yalaba setoro ko palaba sanda. Ebo. Ebo. Ebo shanda abo shita. Bole de dia akondoro yabria sikolobo o shambaria. A toro basitoro ho yara. Our king of kings has power and authority over this principality. We tell you to remove. From this premise, Berbo Sira by Katoro Kiria, Berbori Andere, Bikoro Borio Sanda, Yolobo Sorokori Bizikaramba Kai, Berbo Santai, Borbiki Sando, Be Sitoro Umba Kala Basita, Ebo Oshi Barabo Sondo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Apostle Pete, a stingray uh, sting can cause mechanical venomous injuries. The barb of the stingray can pierce the skin, causing laceration or puncture wound. The barbed sheath can also remain in the skin, which may need to be removed. The venom in the stingray also contains toxic chemicals that can, can cause range of symptoms, pain. And, and so that's in the natural. And that was a dark spiritual attack. And so we take authority over that right now in Jesus' name. The natural physical symptoms must be gone in Jesus' name. No mechanical. Pull it out. Pull it out. Pull it out. Come out in Jesus' name. Hurry up, 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 hurry up, up. So, Father, we take authority over every barb of this stingray in the name of Jesus. We come in agreement. We break every assignment against Apostle in the name of Jesus right now. We loose it in the name of Jesus. We break it. Father, by the power of the blood of Jesus, we command a loosening right now. By the blood of Jesus right now, everything goes, all the pain, every infirmity. Any sickness, Father, coming in, we command sickness to loose in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance looses him now. We come in the power of agreement, Father God. We break every assignment and we release your healing glory, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Over apostle, Father God, no weapon form shall prosper. The blood, the blood of Jesus breaks every evil covenant. God, heal completely, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft, every divination, every jinx, every hex, every spell is destroyed. Destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke in the name of Jesus. Come off of him right now. We pull out that stingray. The tail of that stingray, Lord God. Every poison is removed right now in Jesus' name. Go. 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 In Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus covers you now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
we declare and decree according to this divination spirit. Jesus' words in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and they will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will not be affected by a barb of a stingray in the according to your word, God, according to your word, de decree and declare it so. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for revelation. In the spirit, I saw a medicine man standing up. He had a feather in his hand, and he was wearing one of those bandanas, and he was wearing a red velveteen shirt, and he was standing there chanting. But what came to me was we're in this area in Lake Powell, and it's the marine life in the area. It's a marine spirit, demonic spirit, because that medicine man knows the land. He knows the terrain. He knows the water spirits. So he is familiar with that. We cancel it out right now. That familiar spirit right now, that devilish spirit, that marine spirit right now is defeated. It is dried up in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command you to go. You are loosed. You are loosed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And as a prophet released that, I saw a picture in the, I saw a picture that the, uh, this medicine man was receiving the same curse on him that he placed upon Apostle Pete. And so it went back to him and he's paying the price for making that decree. We cancel it in Jesus' name. We cancel it. It's void. It's null and void. It's null and void. It has no authority in Jesus' name. So how are you feeling? So what what what's going on? Because part of it's the testimony. You feeling better? Hey! Hey! You know what hey day is in Hebrew? Miracles suddenly appearing now. Hey day! Say it with me. Hey day! Miracles suddenly appearing now. <laughs> That's why it's so it's so important to pray for uh, apostolic leaders because when we're going into new territories, taking new ground like that. I mean, we've been prophesying in here and you know saying all this, and the devil hears those things, so it's not uncommon to get visits. But the marine spirit was a little odd. We're in the desert, right? And so we know the water is here, but we don't even know the history of everything i know there was a big massacre here and different things but so god is you know god is showing us how serious this weekend was is you know what i'm saying it's serious so it's not about this what we see it's about what we've opened and how we broke through some things you know for the Dene nation here in this region and so we just thank god for the blood that covers us, Father God. We thank you, Father, that we have been obedient, Father, to come. Father, we have been obedient to do, Father, what you have called us to do in this place, Father God. We have sacrificed, Father God, for your glory, Lord God. We thank you for every speaker, Father, that has come, Lord God. We thank you for every person that stepped foot in these doors. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that your hedge of protection and ring of fire is all around every leader, every apostle that you have commissioned, Father God, this weekend, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for the prophets and the apostles. And Father God, we bind every backlash and retaliation of the enemy in the name of Jesus right now. Father, we thank you that angels have been dispatched on assignment concerning every prophetic word, Father, that they are taking that word and and going with it, Father God, we receive and we receive the words of the prophet and we will prosper in this place. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the victory.
Father, we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, that, that this weekend, Father, you're continuing to keep us as we travel across the reservation, Father God, that, that the blood of Christ is on every road, Father God, every airplane, Lord God, everywhere we go, Father God, the host of heaven encamps around about us, Father, because we fear your name. And so, Lord, we just give you glory. Give us sweet sleep tonight. Father, let there be angel visitations, Father God. Let there be dreams, Lord God. Put an angel, Father God, at, at Pete's bed. In his room, let him see and feel the presence of the angels, Father. And we just thank you. And we give you glory, Father God, for this day. We seal everything that you have done. Father, we seal it in our hearts today, Father God, that it will not the word that has been released will not return to you void, Father, but it will accomplish that which you sent it this weekend. And we decree that and we believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.